The story of Queen Idia, the mother of Oba Esige, encapsulates the importance of women in pre colonial Benin Kingdom. Queen Idia was the first female warrior that ever lived in Benin Kingdom. When the Ida people invaded Benin Kingdom between 1515 and 1516, Queen Idia did not only support her son Oba Esige, she physically joined the Benin warriors to fight the Ida people. Queen Idia also made history in Benin Kingdom when she became the first Queen Wonder Iyoba that lived after her husband Oba Ozorwa joined his ancestors. Prior to the time of Queen Idia, the mother of the crown prince was not allowed to witness the coronation of her son. She was subjected to death. However, this tradition was reformed by Oba Esige, who resisted the Benin people, saying that his mother, Itiani Esige, would never be a subject of such tradition. And Queen Idia lived and witnessed the coronation of her son, Oba Esige. <laughs> War, the Benin people were maintaining a mutual relationship with the Portuguese. The king of Portugal at that time sent his armies and weapons to Benin Kingdom to support Oba Esige. According to history, it was the first time in that part of Africa that is now known as Nigeria for sophisticated weapons to be used to fight tribal war. Uh, the Benins benefited so, so much from that relationship they had with Portuguese. Aside bringing Christianity, aside the trading, Tell it was, we benefited from the warfare, the Benin Ida War. That was the first time, uh, it was 1515, all right, that that Benin Ida War happened. Now, we, the Benins can remember the exact date of that Benin Ida War because a letter was written by one Duarte Perez was a, a, a Portuguese merchant working for the King John at that time that he wrote a letter to the King John that Benin mm -hmm. is highly a Christianized society right. because of the presence of the, the missionaries. However, they were currently fighting a war. So that war, that letter is quoted to be the oldest letter ever written in Nigeria. It was written October 20, 1516. All right. Mm. So it was that letter the Benins could remember because that letter stated that it was almost a year since that war has prevailed. So that means the war actually happened between 1515 and 1516. So in that war, the Benins were able to display in the first time in the history of what we now call Nigeria using of guns. Mm. All right. The Benins were the first people to use guns to fight war. Through the help of, of the, the Portuguese. Portuguese. Of the Portuguese. Because at that time, there was a clause. The first clause that you must understand that there was a law that the king of the Portuguese had put, or more of the Christian world in the Europeans that had at that time, that until you are a Christian nation, the Europeans should not give guns to anybody, any natives, any country that are not Christianized. So one would also say that maybe one that was one of the reasons Oba Esige decided to become a Christian so that he can have those mm. machineries, mm. those weaponry to fight and further expand mm. his already vast em empire. So that was why, because the Benins were the first Christians in this part of the world, mm. so we were also the first people that were given that right to possess guns as weapons. Uh, at the time where javelins, spades, uh, arrows were being used as weapons of warfare. According to history, Queen India was the first female warrior that ever lived in Benin Kingdom. India was the mother of Oba Esige, who reigned from 1504 to 1550. She played a very significant role in the rise and reign of her son. India was said to have been a beautiful and strong woman who had unusual supernatural powers 
with a powerful personality. She is very prominent in the history of ancient Benin Kingdom. She changed the status quo and contributed immensely to the development of the kingdom. She participated in the Benin Ida War that took place between 1515 to 1516. Idia received much of the credit for the victory of Benin Ida War as her magical powers and medicinal knowledge were viewed as critical elements for SEG's success on the battlefield. Queen India married Oba Ozonwa in the late 15th century and became one of the Eloes in the palace. She later became a remarkable personality in the 16th century of Benin politics. In traditional societies, women had no place as they were only meant to serve their husbands, take care of their children, and manage other domestic issues. This role, however, changed as Queen India became a pay setter for the women. First, the way and manner she managed over her son's way to the throne is still something that many historians are unable to comprehend. She actually transformed the Benin dynasty history and paved the way for a new beginning. Although the principle of primogenation was not yet officially constituted, the others and four sons were always made the heir to the throne. India is said to have been the spiritual eye of her son, Osawe, who was later crowned with the title Oba SG. Queen India was a very mystical and powerful in the art of black magic, which she used to seize the throne of Benin for her son. <laughs> ceremonial rites of Ugiyoba festival asserts that she drew upon her medicinal knowledge to treat her son during a fit of madness. The circumstances that brought Esige to the throne were complicated. Esige was named the second son at birth, even though he was supposed to have been declared the third son. History tells us that she had loyalty among the palace officials who tried to favor her by announcing the birth of her son before that of Awa, son of Oloi Ohome, who was delivered earlier in the day before Esige. Oral tradition had it that Aruan did not cry in time after his birth. During the process of waiting for him to cry, Idia also had Esige, but Esige cried immediately at birth, and his birth was officially announced to the Oba before that of Aruan, enabling him to claim the second place. The situation that also moved Esige to the first place was very pathetic. Esige moved to the first place after the first son, Ogidobo, lost his ownership right due to physical disability. He fractured his leg in a competition with his two younger brothers, Anwa and Esige, and became crippled. From the ordinary perspective, this Ogidobo's misfortune can be represented as an ill fated accident which robs him of his destiny. To the people of Benin at that time, it was believed that India was behind the incident. In Benin traditional society, it is believed that the spiritual controls the physical. The people believe that she used her supernatural powers to cripple the false son and bestowed power on her son to become the heir to the throne. The fact that Esige became an Oba and India the accolade of the womb of Orwe, Benin native shock, which represents honor and celebration. She got this tribute because she was the mother who gave birth to an Oba. The point is, she was a womb of Orwe because she gave birth to a son who, although was the third son in line, dramatically ended up becoming the Oba. Her womb was indeed a womb that broke new grounds and defied all odds. The fact that Esige was crowned Oba did not bring to an end the secession crisis in Benin. Esige was greatly disturbed and attacked by his brother, Arwan, who claimed to have been the true heir to the throne. Arwan, the Enoge or Duke of Udo, was a man of dire stature who had fought and won many battles. He was a very great warrior who fought alongside his father, 
Oba Ozolua, while Esige was sent to the missionary school. The victory of Esige over his brother was as a result of Idias' supernatural powers. It is believed that she did not only prepare her son for the battles ahead, but fought along Esige at different occasions. Queen India made history when she became the first woman ever in Binikido to be honored with the title of Iyoba. She became the first among women to be ranked as a senior chief in Karenue who took part in the administration of the kingdom. This was a serious achievement for a woman at that time in the ancient Bini kingdom. Before Oba Esige ascended the throne in the 16th century, it was forbidden for any Oba of Bini to have a mother. The reason was that an Iyaba queen mother would command the same power and authority and the Benis were not ready to serve to others. Therefore, she would be killed before her son's coronation. When Esige came to the throne, because of the problems that he went through and various wars he fought and the part and roles the mother Queen Idia played, he declared against the traditional killings of the Iyoba. He built a place for the Iyoba at Uselu to where the mother resided. The experience of Queen Idia led to the establishment of a political institution of a Guayoba in Benekidom. This was a landmark achievement for a woman at that time. It was almost impossible for Oba Esige to obey such traditions which demanded him to kill his mother, who has been of immense importance to him, cure him from madness and help him to defeat his brother Aaron. He, when he, he saw that practices that when the Oba dies, mm. the Iyoba not necessarily i'd establish one point that okay. the viewer should listen carefully mm -hmm. there's a difference between oba's first wife isonerie mm. and iyoba okay all right sometimes iyoba is the mother of the of, crown prince oh, yes of the crown prince of the next oba, oba. all right mm. most sometimes the isonerie can also be iyoba yes if yeah it can be possible yes yeah. but sometimes as well isonerie who was the it it's now called a son area in the old times it was called a nahe the first wife of the oba a nahe okay it's now called a son area so uh, sometimes the son area is also different from the yoba the practices was restricted to the yoba yes not necessarily the first wife except if the first wife is also the yoba okay. so now that was that was not actually the practices during the time of the ogisos now, you understand, like the Benin, mm. when we say Benin civilized, is a civilized society. Some things would have mitigated to another thing that, that led to the creation of such policies. Mm. All right. At one point in our history, mm. the, the, the Benin nobles discovered that the Iyoba was as powerful as the Oba. Mm. So, so, the mother of the city number in our old Benin mm. became as powerful as a Oba. Oh, right. okay. So, in order to make do with not serving to Oba, the, they also now created a policy that if the present Oba joins his ancestors, mm. the wife who gave birth to the next Oba mm. must also go along with him so as to have one Oba, so that we can just concentrate that we have one Oba. So, however, that policy is run through some systems and got to a to the time of Obaisigi, yeah, yeah. one also believed yeah. that that practice to him yes, was, was, wrong. was wrong, was barbaric. Mm. To him, yes. or it was barbaric. So he needed to find systematic way to reform, the to reform that policy. Mm. That uh, it doesn't matter if I become, I, I become the Oba of Benin, not by choice. Mm. It's by ordination. In Masak Bondori Oba. Mm. All right? And so, it's, if if it's predestined, it's predestined. Be. so because what he had no control over mm -hmm. will lead to the death of my mother. So, some of the Uzamans, mm -hmm. the Jones, who were also hereditary, mm -hmm. uh -huh, you also will kill your mother. If I have to kill my mother mm -hmm. because I, I, I am to become Oba, mm -hmm. so you also, some of the chiefs are also hereditary. Mm -hmm. If you want to also become the Olia, mm -hmm. the Ezomo, the Eho. Mm -hmm. You also will kill your mother because that's it's almost the same thing. Mm -hmm. So they had to see reason and they now had to say in order for we 
Now, I mean, I go beva. Once you become an Oba, you officially declare your mother as a Yoba. She is to move from where you preside from, which is Ogbe, to go to Selu. Mm. At that time, it was very far apart. Mm. All right, it was not all Benin City, mm. uh -huh, so it was quarter. It was very far. So Useluni, she will now go and be presiding over Uselu, so as to a more of like a more of like an outpost, many duke mm. ye or river, so that our power, our influences, our say does not encroach mm. Mm. to affect people in the yes, yeah, to affect your authority. Mm. So whenever she wants to do anything, not with our authority, but you will not grant her the authority to do whatever she wants to do yeah, over there. Say, no. All right, so that was how SEG solved that puzzle. That's because mm. exactly it was a Christian. Mm. So some of these policies that were reformed mm. was actually because of the SEG became a mm. Christian. Christian. All right. <laughs> that Esige took not to execute his mother was not accepted by some of the senior chiefs. Olia, for example, was fully against it. This might be related to the personality of Idia, which most people dreaded in the kingdom. By the actions of Esige, Idia became the first woman to be bestowed with a first-class chieftaincy title in the kingdom. Since then, other Iyobas have also been confined with the same title as sent to the Iyaba Palace at Uselu. Queen India distinguished herself in the ancient kingdom of Benin when she led her own troops to the Benin Ida War in 1516. She is said to have fought profusely and the victory of Benin in the war was ascribed to her extraordinary bravery, wisdom and magical powers. Her participation in the war brought her honor and made her prominent that she now became a very strong political personality in the kingdom. She made history and completely changed the narratives of the ordinary Benin woman. The Benin Ida war, very significant to the kingdom of Benin, the war broke out as a result of the rebellion of one of Oba Esige's most senior chief, the leader of the Uzama Grace Chiefs, was said to have been behind this war, which became an event for India to display her supernatural powers. According to tradition, Chief Olia was said to have rebelled against the monarch because he felt he was humiliated by the actions of Oba Esige. The issue that led to the rebellion, which exacerbated the Ida war, Concerned Olia's wife, Imagwero, the arrogant Olia was said to have continuously praised his wife at the palace and claimed she was the most faithful woman in the kingdom. The conflict between him and the palace arose as the other embarked on a plan to prove him wrong about his wife. The end was tragic as Imagwero fell into the plot of the other and Chief Olia felt humiliated and decided to pay the other back by joining forces with another kingdom to bring down Benin. The aggrieved and humiliated Olia went home and murdered his most senior wife, Princess Amie, who was also the eldest daughter of Oba Esige, just to provoke him. At that point in time, the tradition demands the ruling Oba to give out his first daughter to the most senior chief in order to ensure peace between the Oba and his chiefs. The tradition that requires the Oba of Benin to give his first daughter to either Iyasere of Benin or Chief Olia was reformed in the 20th century by Oba Akenzwa II, who gave his first daughter to ordinary Idiji of Benin Kingdom. Since then, the first daughter of the Oba of Benin is no more restricted to marry either Iyasere of Benin or Chief Olia. The tradition has led to the death of many princesses. Whenever any Oba has quarrel with any of these chiefs, his daughter was married to, the princess would be the one to suffer from such crisis. Olia did not stop there. In order to bring disaster to Benin, he went further to the Atta 
king of Ida kingdom and lied to him that Bini was planning to invade his territory and that it would be better he attacked Bini first. News also got to Bini that the Ida was planning to invade Bini. With all this chaos and conflict, the stage was already set for the Bini Ida war. It was in such a chaotic situation that Idia stepped in and rescued her son and his kingdom from collapsing. It is important to understand the factor that led to this war was caused by a woman and the solution of victory in the war was also ascribed to a woman. Queen Idia, however, became more famous decades after her dismiss. As recorded by tradition, Oba Esige commissioned the Igueromo Brass Caster Guild, the Igbe Sama, every Carver's Guild, to produce every mask in memorial of his mother. These every masks are part of the collections of pagan plagues that the Obas wear around the waist during Igwe festival to straighten the Oba during the Emobo ceremony that commemorates Esige's defeat of his brother, Arwa. Today, Iyoba Idia's face is the most widely known face of an African royal woman after the Egyptian queen. Her ivory mask face is at countless museums all over the world. It has been widely produced and represents several logos in different parts of the world. Idia's face was immortalized in the 16th century ivory mask presently at British Museum. It became famous when the Nigerian government chose it as the emblem for the second Black Festival of Arts and Culture, known as FESTA, that Nigeria hosted in 1977. The mask became more famous when the British Museum refused to release it on loan to Nigeria, even after demanding £2 million which the Nigerian government put up. The late Oba Akenzua, however, commissioned the Igbe Sama Ivory Carvers to produce two replicas of the Idia mask that was looted by the British soldiers of the 1897 on just British punitive expedition. Queen Idia is said to be the most powerful queen that has ever ruled Benekido. She was as powerful as an Oba. It was also recorded that during Esige's madness, she was in control of the kingdom and kept faithful servants around him in order to keep the secret from leaking out. Idia was part of the development of both the social and political reforms of the Benekido. Her reforms are still very much relevant today in Benin, and this is why she has remained the most popular woman in Benin Kingdom. No African woman is rated as powerful as Queen Idia, both physical and spiritual, might characterize Idia's personality. That is why her place in Benin history must be told. That is the story. Thank you all for watching, and bye for now.